Hey guys, what's up? You're watching the EJ Tech Show with me, Sahil, and this right here is the new Samsung Galaxy Watch 3, which gets some cool features that I will be talking about in just a minute. But first, I want to talk about the design, which for the most part remains unchanged since the last generation. And honestly, I'm okay with that. Because in a world where smartwatches are getting squarer by the day, it's nice to see Samsung retaining the traditional circular timepiece. Although that being said, square-shaped smartwatches do have an obvious advantage over circular ones. They tend to offer better screen-to-body ratio, making it easier to type and interact with notifications. But if you don't really care about that, then you're going to love the rounded 1.4-inch OLED display on the Galaxy Watch 3 with its super convenient rotating bezel. Apart from doubling up as a fidget spinner, it's a terrific way to interact with the user interface. The function buttons are also now more rounded and the bottom one has a shade of red to it in order to easily differentiate it as the home button. The stainless steel body looks great while the watch band is now made from genuine leather which feels way more premium than the default silicone band on the Galaxy Watch 4G. Although it's worth noting that the leather band does make this fairly audible squeaking noise. Yeah, it does do that every time I shake my wrist, but then also I think it's happening because the leather has yet to be worn out and I've only been using this smartwatch for about 10 days now. So I think eventually that noise will just fade out and not be as noticeable down the line. But right now, I don't think it's anything to get alarmed about. Now the Galaxy Watch 3 is both lighter and slimmer than the previous generation, but it still feels pretty bulky on your wrist. Luckily, it comes in two sizes, 41mm and the bigger 45mm variant that I've been using. Now, go for whichever one you think works best for your wrist. The Galaxy Watch 3 is also IP68 certified for water resistance up to 5 ATM, which means you should be able to swim with it, but you may want to swap the watch band for something made of silicone or nylon, as leather usually doesn't fare too well in water. By the way, Samsung sent me the LTE variant of the Galaxy Watch 3, which means you can use it to make calls directly from the watch without having to rely on your smartphone. But FYI, that LTE feature only works with Samsung devices that support either Airtel or Geo. That means no Vodafone, no other Android phones, and definitely does not support an iPhone. Now let's talk about the internals and the first thing you need to know is that the watch runs on a 1.15 GHz dual core Exynos processor which isn't going to be as powerful as a Snapdragon counterpart but then again a smartwatch doesn't require a whole lot of processing power to begin with. Over here the RAM is more important and luckily you've got 1 GB of it which is more than sufficient for a smartwatch. In my experience the Galaxy Watch 3 always felt very snappy and navigating around the software was never an issue. Talking about software, the watch runs on Samsung's proprietary Tizen OS, which I've always preferred to Google's Wear OS in terms of responsiveness and general user experience. But just like Wear OS, Samsung hasn't really upgraded Tizen in a long time, so the software has now started to feel a little bit stagnant. Also, third-party app support still isn't all that great as you have to rely on the Galaxy Store instead of the Play Store for all your downloads. Overall, app selection pales in comparison to Wear OS and Apple Watch devices. On the plus side, the Galaxy Watch 3 offers a great amount of personalization options. There are over 80,000 downloadable watch faces available on the Galaxy Store, and a lot of them are free. Now, Samsung has packed in some noteworthy health features inside the Galaxy Watch 3 in order to help it better compete with the Apple Watch. You now get blood oxygen level tracking, fall detection that will automatically send out an SOS if it detects that you took a hard fall, as well as ECG monitoring, which isn't available in India just yet, but Samsung says it's coming soon. Sleep tracking is also available here as it was in the previous generation and it works really well now. It's been able to pick up when I fall asleep and wake up in the night, while the Samsung Health app provides plenty of insights on your sleep quality that might help you improve. In fact, new to the Galaxy Watch 3 is a sleep score feature which rates sleep quality on a scale of 0 to 100 based on total time asleep, time in sleep cycles, and other factors. Apart from sleep tracking, Samsung's best fitness hits are also available, like 40 types of different exercises to choose from, heart rate monitoring, stress tracking, and built-in GPS for tracking your walks and runs. Finally, let's talk about battery life, and this is one area that continues to impress me in Samsung's Galaxy Watch lineup. The battery unit on this watch will easily last you for one and a half days and even two days with the power save mode turned on. The biggest downside over here is the charging speed, as it takes almost two and a half hours to top it fully, 
which is a bit weird for a watch that only packs in a 340 mAh battery. The slight silver lining, however, is that if you happen to own the latest Samsung flagship phone or any Qi certified devices, then you can wirelessly charge the smartwatch as well. Also keep in mind that this is the 45mm variant with a bigger battery, so if you're planning to buy the 41mm one, expect a shorter battery life. So overall, the Galaxy Watch 3 is offering you everything I expect from a good smartphone, a fantastic design, loads of health features, and fast performance. Best of all, it's compatible with both Android phones and iPhones. The software is definitely due for an upgrade, but Tizen is still miles ahead of Google's Wear OS. And if you're okay with the 32,990 rupees price tag for the 45mm variant, then I say go for it.